Hey guys, we're going to do something a little different today. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little Watch 101. And today I want to discuss how exactly does one go about valuing a watch and finding value. And to make this point, I'm going to use a $100 Fossil Automatic, a Hamilton Jazzmaster Automatic, and a Omega Seamaster. This is $100. This is $1,000, and this is the $5,000. And we're going to go through it one feature at a time, go through each watch's and its price point, and talk about what you can expect. Well, it's what's inside that counts, so I think it makes most sense to begin with the backside and, of course, reveal the movement itself. So at $100, you can expect a generic Japanese or Chinese movement. In this case for Fossil, it is the Miyota movement, uh, a Japanese based company. And so essentially what you're gonna find is these are out of the box movements that the watch company just bought and slapped on into their watch or fashion watch or whatever have you and called it a day. Their performances are usually pretty poor. I'm talking plus 20, minus 10 seconds. Um, this particular Miyota actually is somewhat decorated with the striping, which is kind of nice, but typically you would not see any kind of finishing or decorations on the movement at this price point. $1,000. We're going to get a Swiss-based movement, most typically an ETA or a Salida-based movement. This particular grade of ETA, because there are multiple grades, this is a high grade ETA movement and you can tell with this uh, perlage decoration on some of the plates of the movements, uh, you can expect a plus 10, minus 10 movement, but some ETAs can even go up to as great as a chronometer grade movement. This particular movement in the Hamilton piece is modified to have a grand 80 hours power reserve. And so it's a pretty impressive movement. You're getting a great bang for the buck. $5,000. Well, the previous price points were both out-of-the-box movements. At this price point, you can expect an in-house movement. And what do I mean by in-house? I mean it was designed, it was manufactured, and it is for Omega. This is the Omega Caliber 8800. It's a coaxial movement, which is a very innovative uh, modification to the typical escapement system. It's got a full balance bridge, which helps with um, which helps with shock protection. It's got a silicon hairspring, which makes this watch essentially anti-magnetic. And this watch is a master chronometer and meta certified for that matter watch, which means it's gonna keep time with plus six or minus four seconds per day. And so you're getting into the chronometer grade um, seconds. And this is really what you're paying for. This gorgeous finishing, and yes, it is machine finish. And, uh, not all that fancy, but uh, I just love the way the jewels are laid out onto this movement. Let's talk about the crystal. $100, you're going to get a mineral crystal uh, or some kind of Seiko hard lax or something along those lines. So we're talking about a, a hardness scale of 5, 6, maybe 7 for the hard lax. And so... These guys are not exactly scratch resistant. They're going to see scratches if you ding them over time. And more importantly, if you angle them in certain ways, and you can see it here, uh, the light refracts from these crystals in a way that you just can't even read the watch. And it just isn't very romantic. $1,000, you can expect a sapphire crystal. These bad boys are a hardness scale of 9, so essentially scratch proof, unless you've are scratching this against your girlfriend's engagement ring. And of course, what's even more romantic is, I'm gonna put it at the same angle as the mineral crystal. You can see how you can still see through the watch, the clarity and the way lights refract through a uh, sapphire crystal is just amazing. $5,000, you can't really get much better than sapphire glass, but you can expect um, some doming of the glass for a better effect. You can begin to expect for some sports watches uh, anti-reflective coating and in fact this particular Omega does have anti-reflective coating on both the internal and external sides of, of the case. 
Let's talk a little bit about finishing, overall case design, and what you can expect of the overall appearance. Case design of the Fossil, unrefined, thick, mono finished. What I mean by that is nothing but polished. No real, nothing really interesting here. The transitions of the lugs themselves are pretty uh, uh, obtrusive. No signed crown, um, no polished markers. Although I do have to give Fossil credit, they do have applied markers and the guilloche uh, dial is pretty decent actually. $1,000. Now we begin to see some real thought put into the case design itself, right? You can see how the lugs uh, have a unique design that's kind of special to this particular watch. You can begin to see the bezel is polished, but the lugs are, are actually of satin finish. And so same here, polished, Satin, satin, signed crown. So you're gonna to begin to see variations in polishing and finishing methodologies uh, at this price point, which really makes it uh, much better. And you can actually feel some craftsmanship involved. The Seamaster case is one of my absolute favorites. Again, you see transitions of a satin finish on the case flank, uh, polished bezels here, uh, and even polished bevels here as well. So uh, again, the difference in finishing as well as a very interesting case design. You're going to see uh, the bezel of the lugs is twisted and it's polished while the inner side is satin and the flank is satin. And so you can kind of see just how gorgeous this flow of polish is going through from case to case and lug to lug rather. And so really thought design here, another signed screw down crown. And then the case itself cuts the girth of the watch, giving it an even thinner appeal than previously, uh, than what it really is. So you can be really begin to see the value in the case design. Forgot to talk a little bit about the dial here. Gorgeous dial. At this price point, you can begin to expect some rare materials such as white gold indices, markers, hands, or rhodium plated. The, the date wheel itself is not just some generic colored date wheel, but the date wheel is actually colored to the same color standards as the dial, which is really thoughtful. And while it's hard to show on this camera, the, the numerals on this date dial is actually silvered and bead blasted. And so there's all kinds of techniques going on on this price point that you just don't quite see on the other two price points. I'll talk a little bit about accessories here. $100 generic genuine leather strap, um, pin buckle. Uh, actually, you actually do get a signed pin buckle, which is quite nice on Fossil Zen. $1,000. You're going to get some cushioning. You're going to get some crocodile patterns. You're going to get some calf skin underside. And of course, you're also going to get a pretty decent deployment clasp in this range. It's not going to be top tier, but it's going to do the trick. And it makes it look quite luxurious as well. Omega. They make great clasps. Another deployment clasp again at this price point. This rubber strap is not the conventional leather but it's of the absolute highest grade of rubber and it's very substantial. And of course, should I put this guy on a Omega OEM leather strap, then you'll really see the quality of uh, the bolstering and the soft supple calfskin underneath. Um, but again, that's what you can expect. So three watches, three significantly different price points, but you're definitely going to get your money's worth if you know what you're looking for.